Let's work some examples of exponents when we have like bases. First, if I have minus 3 squared, the minus 3 is in parentheses, so our rule is straightforward. We just take minus 3, multiply it by itself. So L comes a 9. On the other hand, if I have minus 3 squared, no parentheses, this is a shorthand for minus 1 times 3 squared. So here we have minus 1 times 3 times 3, which gives a minus 9. Note our answers are different here, so we need to be aware of this difference in notation. Similar example, let's try minus 3 in parentheses to the minus 2. Now, from before, we saw that if I have a negative exponent, if I want to work with this, I could push this item here into the denominator if I want to drop that minus sign. Okay, and then if we had a fraction and this was in the denominator, we can move it to the numerator. Now for here, okay, I have a minus 3 squared in the denominator, so it's going to be minus 3 times minus 3. That gives me a 9. We get a 1 9. On the other hand, if we just have the minus in front with no parentheses, that's shorthand for minus 1 times 3 to the minus 2. 3 to the minus 2 is just going to be 1 over 3 squared. That's 1 9. So I get a minus 1 9th, and we see as before, these are going to be different, so we have to be careful with this. Next, working with zero exponents. Now, if I take anything to the zeroth power, except for zero, we get one. If I take zero to the zero, it's undefined. So if I take a variable to the zeroth power, okay, we say that's equal to one, but we should put a note in there saying, unless our variable happens to be equal to zero. Okay, we usually leave that off. So if I had 2x in parentheses, raise that to the zeroth power, I don't really have to worry about what's in the parentheses unless it's not obviously zero. It's just going to be a 1 that comes out. On the other hand, if I had minus 2x to the zero, this zero exponent only affects the x. So the x to the zero goes to a 1, and then we wind up getting a minus 2. Next, let's do some simplifications. So let's suppose we have the expression a cubed times a squared times a to the minus one. When I have like bases and a product like this, the rule straightforward. We just take the sum of the exponents. So here I'm going to have a raised to the three plus two plus a minus one. That's going to give us a four, so we get a to the fourth power. To check, I work it out longhand. So a cubed is a times a times a. A squared is a times a. a to the minus 1 is 1 over a. Now, we note the 1 over a will cancel 1 over a's, and then I'm left with 4 of these a's. We multiply, that's going to be a to the 4th power. So our work checks. Another example, so we'll use a fraction. Here, I have a cubed over a to the minus 2 times a to the 4th power. We have options on how we can start. So the way I'll do it here, I'm going to simplify the denominator. So a to the minus 2 times a to the fourth, okay, we add the exponents since we have a like base, so I get an a squared. Then we have the rule from before. If we have a quotient, I'm going to subtract off the exponent in the denominator. So that's going to move up here as a minus 2. We have a to the 3 minus 2, which is a to the 1. a to the 1 is just a itself. Now, another move we could have done, I could have started by moving the a to the minus 2 to the numerator as an a squared, then similar work. Let's check this. So I have a cubed, so it's a times a times a. a to the minus 2 is 1 over a times 1 over a. a to the fourth is a times a times a times a. Now, I could cancel out three a's on the top and the bottom. Then with what's left over, I could cancel the leftover a in the bottom, the denominator, with one of the 1 over a's. So we're left with a 1 over 1 over a. Now that's a inverse, so I can move that to the top as an a. But another way to think of this, and it's a useful trick to know, if I want to clear this out, well, the way I get this to go to 1 is multiplying by a. So I'm going to multiply by 1 in the form of a over itself. So 1 times a is a. 1 over a times a is 1, I have a over 1, and then I get an a. So that's going to agree with the work that we did here. Okay, over here, what do I have? This is just the rule I noted. If I have 1 over 
a to the minus one, we just flip that up into the numerator as a itself, and then we get a again. Let's use a rule for when we have something to an exponent raised to another exponent. So I take b to the minus two raised to the third power. Our rule says we multiply the exponents. So we get b to the minus six. And then if we want to write this with all positive exponents, we write one over b to the sixth. Now check. We do this a long way. This is b to the minus two to the third power. So I multiply b to the minus two by itself three times. Each of these is a one over b squared. So if we multiply the ones, I get a one in the numerator. Multiplying the b squareds, okay, we have a like base, so I sum the exponents. We get b to the sixth in the denominator, and this checks. For a slightly more complicated example, okay, let's consider b cubed over b to the minus one, b squared, quantity raised to the minus two. So we'll do this in two ways. First, the fast and loose way. So I'm not gonna really respect order of operations here. Now, first thing I notice, I have a minus sign in the exponent. If I have a fraction in here, that just says flip. So this is gonna to go to b to the minus one, b squared over b cubed. Now, if I wanna clean up what's inside the parentheses before I apply the exponent, what do we do? Well, I have b to the minus one times b squared, like base, so we sum the exponents to get a b to the one, which is just b. So I have b to the one over b cubed, then our rule says we're going to take the difference in the exponents to clean this up. So I get a b to the minus 2. Now, this is raised to a second power, so we use our rule, which just says multiply the exponents, and I get b to the minus 4, or 1 over b to the 4th if I want all positive exponents. Now, to check this, okay, if I go order of operations, we do what's in the parentheses first. So I want to clean up this b cubed over b to the minus 1 times b squared. Now, I could use our rule which lets us flip these into the numerator. So b inverse goes to the numerator as a b. b squared goes into the numerator as a b to the minus 2. We use our rule for multiplying with a like base. That's going to give me 3 plus 1 plus a minus 2 for the new exponent. So that's going to give us b squared. We're raising to the minus two, so we multiply the exponents. That gives a b to the minus four, and we get one over b to the fourth, which agrees with our work on the other side. For a final example, let's just work with numbers. So I'll take one half raised to the minus third, minus two to the minus two, plus two to the zero. Now going through term by term, if I have one half raised to the minus third, well, to get rid of this minus in the exponent, we just flip over what's on the inside, which becomes a two, and we have two cubed. Two cubed is gonna be equal to eight. Next term, I have a minus, but no parentheses, so this is really minus one times two to the minus two. Two to the minus two is gonna be one over two squared, or one fourth, so we get a minus one fourth. Finally, two to the zero, we know whatever the base is, as long as it's not zero, we're gonna get a one to come out. So I have a one here. So I have an eight plus a one gives me a nine minus a quarter. The nine, I wanna get everything over a like denominator. So I need to get this nine term over a four. So I multiply by four over four to get 36 over four. So our answer is 35 over four. Now, of course I always check. So what do I have here? In the calculator, I'll put 0.5 to the minus third for this term. That's going to give me an 8. Here I'll have a minus 1 quarter. Here I'll have a 1, and that gives me an 8.75 when we crunch the numbers. On the other hand, I have 35 over 4. I get 8.75, so these agree, and I know I didn't make any obvious mistakes going from here to here.